The Orange Box was one of the greatest deals in gaming when it released in 2007 on Xbox 360, PC and later PlayStation 3, cramming five Valve-developed classics onto one disc, Half-Life 2, Half-Life 2 Episode 1, Episode 2, Team Fortress 2, and introducing the original portal, the bar of quality was supremely high. Originally shipping on the Xbox 360 at a native 720p, Xbox One X enhancements years later delivered a 9x resolution increase, offering up a native 4K presentation that naturally transitioned over to Series X. But as you're seeing here, we've managed to take Half-Life 2 and indeed all of the Orange Box titles up to 60 frames per second. It's not exactly easy to get this running and there are a boatload of caveats, but this is the definitive way to play Valve's classics on Microsoft's console. Now, to revisit these games today on console is fraught with issues if you're on Xbox. Firstly, the Orange Box has been removed entirely from the Xbox Marketplace as of the 23rd of February 2023. It simply cannot be bought digitally anymore. However, if you bought it before its removal, it's still of course possible to play it today from your library. And if you own the physical disc, you're still good to go of course. But that's obviously no good at all for Series S users without a disc drive. In that case, you had to buy the digital version while it was still available. So what we're seeing here is actually a user mod of sorts in conjunction with Microsoft's Xbox enhancements, which scale up the original Xbox 360's 720p to Ultra HD on Series X and a still impressive 1440p on Series S. But as nice as those enhancements are, performance remains problematic. It's not just 30fps, but an unevenly frame paced 30fps introducing visible judder. An official solution to this via Microsoft's FPS boost would obviously have been welcome, but for whatever reason, it never happened. 60fps is definitely possible, as you can see though, and I'd say that Microsoft and Valve could still make it happen, and I hope they do. Because, as cool as this footage is, the mod comes with a number of limitations that do cause issues. Where does this mod come from then? Well, one of our supporters, SJ33, highlighted a Twitter post from Famicom, which in turn pointed to a YouTube embed of this year old video from Reverie Pass. Turns out that getting 60fps working is relatively simple. It's all clearly explained in their YouTube description, but as a quick summary, you'll need an original Xbox 360 console and a copy of Orange Box and a PC to make the modifications. No hardware mod is necessary here and any 360 machine will do. Now you must enter the options menu of each game in the Orange Box to create a save file and then, once done, transfer the Orange Box user settings from the console to a USB stick. Take the stick over to a PC and load up a program called Horizon. This is a tool that allows users to decrypt and analyze Xbox 360 save games and here we enter the user settings file and extract the individual config files for each game. Half-Life 2, Episode 1, Episode 2, Portal should all have one. And then it's a simple matter of opening each config file and copy pasting the settings in Reverie Pass's YouTube description. The crucial bit being that FPS underscore max line is now set to zero to allow for 60 FPS. Finally, replace the config files on the USB stick with your newly updated ones, re-sign and encrypt the file and then take the USB stick back to your Xbox 360. It's then a simple matter of transferring the user settings file to cloud storage. And now, whenever you access the orange box on an Xbox One or Xbox Series console, it'll download this modified user settings file. Fundamentally, it works. The performance line is a faultless 60 FPS as you'd rightly expect of a 2004 game. Really, there's no chance this is buckling under at 4K 60 FPS given the frankly overkill GPU power being thrown at it on Series X. I think you get the point with the original game. And likewise, Episode 1 holds up at a watertight 60 FPS as well. And in fact, even the more taxing Episode 2, released later in 2007, plays out at a locked 60 in my experience. All round, Xbox Series X reaps the greatest benefits from this mod, given it was already running at 4K through official enhancements. The only parts that really do not age well are some rough textures 
and those awkward loading buffer screens between areas. Plus, the lack of any effective anti-aliasing means, even at 3840x2160, expect to see some heavy pixel crawl and noise on its hard geometric edges. But in a way, that's part of the charm of revisiting old games. It's not a remaster, it's simply the original 360 game as played back with a few minor tweaks. We did try adding some anti-aliasing commands to the modified script, but unfortunately, they just did not work. Of course, all of this applies to Xbox Series S as well, the 4 teraflop sibling console. In this case, we get 1440p native on back and pat enhanced 360 games, so that's the starting point for this orange box collection. And this user workaround, the modified cloud save, also makes way for a flawless 60 FPS on Series S as well. Across the board, from Half Life 2 to Episode 2, there's zero issue to speak on here. But again, the ineffective anti-aliasing in the game's base code is more of a glaring issue on Series S. At 1440p on Series S, the pixel crawl and noise is exaggerated even more so in the upscale to 4K displays, especially on the fences here. And honestly, it's hardly outside the realms of possibility that Series S could handle such a game at 4K 60fps as well. All these games are old enough, so it really should be viable. One final point before we move on though. For both Xbox Series X and S with this modified cloud save, the options menu shows a higher output resolution for each game. It reads as 1080p here, which is curious, given it's normally greyed out at 720p on the original 360 version. This one's a bit of a puzzle, bearing in mind that X enhanced resolution increases are handled at the DirectX level, with the software itself not having any idea that anything has changed. Next up, those still using Xbox One and One X systems also have the same means to run at 60fps, except it's probably best you don't. Starting with the base Xbox One, the game runs at the same native 720p resolution as the 360 version, and certainly for the opening 5 minutes, it runs at 60fps with the occasional dropped frame. Emerging to City 17's first open area though, the lurchers to 45 FPS are a sign that the machine just hasn't got the ability to keep it going across the whole game. And even worse, episode 2 kicks off with a stress test right from the off, between 35 to 50 FPS, with battles even dropping to the 20s later on. So the 30 FPS cap is undeniably best kept in place for the base Xbox One. Moving up the power ladder to the One X console, here we get a 4K resolution out of the game by default. But then, performance wise, it was set to 4K on the basis it would be targeting 30 FPS, not 60. The base Half Life 2 adventure runs well enough in fairness and only shows a few drops at the city centre. As for the Episode 2 portion, we're again between 40 to 60 FPS. Better than the base machine, no question. But across the breadth of the game, it's just not a stable lock. It works on Xbox Series consoles best then. It really works, though with major limits I'll touch on in a second. But let's go back even further through the console generations to see where this leaves the original Xbox 360 hardware running the game. At the default 30fps, performance really has not held up well. It holds to 30fps in the original Half-Life 2 closely enough, but has frame time issues, oscillations between 16 and 50 milliseconds that do the motion no favours. So in using this modified save file, unlocking to 60fps, it reveals just why we have a 30fps cap in the first place. Frankly, the Xbox 360 just doesn't have the GPU power to push to 60fps and never did. Even running at 720p native, there are drops under. Interestingly, there's a double buffer vSync setup in place, which means the frame rate jumps between 30 and 60fps as a target. It makes the drops even more stark, and sadly, there are a lot of them. The original Half-Life 2 has some good stretches of play at 60fps around interiors, but with jarring drops to 30fps as well. Even worse is the more taxing Episode 2 portion, which locks to the 30fps line far more often. As it is, it doesn't feel terribly enjoyable to play this way. And likewise with Portal, there's just too much rapid switching, due to the double buffer vSync between 30 and 60fps targets. All of which proves that, in the end, the 30fps cap here made a lot of sense at the time. It's just a shame that Valve didn't properly implement 
consistent 33.3 millisecond frame pacing. With all of that in mind, it's a win for Xbox Series X and S users, of course. But what's the drawback? Well, firstly, the modified cloud save trick only works if you still, after all these years, have an Xbox 360 console with your account on it. Secondly, once you've put that save on your Xbox Series X or S or Xbox One console, you must not make any changes to the game's options menu. Once any change is made, it reverts to 30fps and you have to repeat the whole process over again. Perhaps worse still, it seems it's not possible to even resume a saved game either. It always has to be a new game, or it defaults back to the standard 30fps cap. On the upside, Xbox Series X and S have the quick resume feature that offers a workaround here. The original Portal also is very playable in just one PlayStation if you want to deploy the workaround for that. But on balance, it's not exactly a practical way to play all of these games. For that, we really do need Microsoft and Valve's involvement with an official update to these games. Now, as an aside, Portal 2, another game built on the Source engine years later, sadly doesn't work with this 60fps mod. It doesn't let you extract a config text file to tweak, so it's really just these orange box games. Overall, hacks like this prove that increasing the frame rates on older Xbox 360 games doesn't have to be a DirectX level tweak. Sometimes it's possible to get older games running at 60fps on newer machines with relatively small config file tweaks like this. Changes to the game code itself, as minor as this, should be viable for Microsoft or Valve to implement themselves. In fact, in the past, we've seen exceptions being made for popular games, Dark Souls 3 on Xbox Series X and S being a classic example. It didn't receive an FPS boost style DirectX upgrade, but instead, Microsoft collaborated with developer from software. They specifically allowed the game to unlock to 60fps here, where the regular old Xbox One and One X cap to 30. Clearly, classics of the Orange Box's caliber deserve better treatment via official means to get to 60fps, and even 120fps should be doable on modern Series X and S machines given the sheer age of these games. All round, it does show the book is wide open for potential upgrades. Improved anti-aliasing, higher FOV settings all wouldn't go amiss. If it's possible with a simple workaround using tweaked saved game files, you have to imagine what else is possible. But that's all from me today. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to like or subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell for instant notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net and to get in touch directly, you know where to find me. But for me for now, thanks for watching.